was up? This is Place the Movie Fan and welcome to a Halloween themed video of 2020. Today I will be giving my thoughts on Film Master Adam's review of Halloween 2. Now I fucking love Film Master Adam. He is one of my favorite movie reviewers on YouTube. Now he made a review of Halloween 2 from 2009 along with his friend Spidey. Now how good is the review? Let's get into it. So, without further ado, let's begin. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more. I'm Adam J. And I'm my Yes, this is Spidey, my good associate here. <laughs> Is nobody likes me. I'm gonna have to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this intro. For one thing, it has a charming, cheery music, which doesn't fit with Halloween at all. If you want to make a review that's Halloween themed, you should at least attempt to make the intro somewhat spooky. That is not the only problem. The other problem is that the corking in the clips isn't muted at all. And it's very distracting to hear two words at the same time being classed into each other. I mean, the audio of your clips and the audio of the lyrics. But the main issue that I hear with this intro is that it drags out for far too fucking long. In my opinion, an intro should be half a minute at most. An intro going over that is overkill in my opinion. Though I will give this intro credit for one thing. As unfitting as the music is, it's still fucking awesome. Hold on, six months ago? Six months ago from what? Usually when a title card says something like that, there are at least some fucking events that come first. It's incredibly fucking awkward to start a video like this. Since I have no fucking idea what happened before it takes us back to the past. Maybe that intro was supposed to show what happened before, but that leads to another critique of the intro. The intro doesn't look like it's showing any events. In fact, it legitimately feels like just a fucking intro to the video. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that title card, to be honest. As for what I think of the skits in the video, they are fine, honestly. I have no issue with them. And I have nothing to add either, so I will be skipping them. Was it really necessary to have two intros in the same video? Though to give credit, unlike the other intro, this one is actually fucking awesome. It really gets me into the mood to enjoy the rest of the fucking video. It's well edited. And that title card at the end sums up perfectly what your theme is. But seriously though, why the hell did you feel the need to have two fucking intros in the same video? That was very redundant and unnecessary. Pick an intro and stick with it. You can't have fucking both. Yes, you see, I was unfortunate enough to see this piece of dog shit while it was in theaters. Lucky for me, right? Well, at least you knew it was carpets the moment you saw it in theaters. As for me, I actually used to fucking enjoy this movie. Yeah, back in 2009 when it was in theaters, I really did enjoy it. Which, looking back, I regret. But then again, I had terribly low standards on movies back then. I wasn't the passionate movie fan that I am now. You see, I'm the minority of individuals that actually enjoyed Rob Zombie's Halloween reboot for what it was. That's totally fine. I respect your opinion. And to give credit, unlike most, Bad horror movie remakes. This movie, at the very least, has enough good aspects about it that actually makes it memorable. Dr. Lubis is fucking awesome in that movie. In fact, he is the best character of it. I really have no fucking idea how they managed to screw him up in this movie, since it is part of the exact same fucking series of Halloween movies. So the film opens with an apparent excuse to get the director's wife back into this series, as we see Sherry Moon Zombie talking to Michael. Wait, that's not the same fucking kid. Yes, well, you see, my friend, the kid from the first film couldn't come back for the movie because apparently over the course of two years, he had grown too tall to play the role. But, but wait, 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 no, that's complete bullshit. The fuck 
fucking kid is sitting down. You wouldn't be able to tell if he was taller or not? That's not a fucking excuse. Well, it's Rob Zombie logic, man. Well, Rob Zombie can kiss my black ass. Yeah, I have to agree. What worked about Dave Farge playing Michael in the first film was that he looked fucking scary as hell, even when he was acting innocent. He just had a naturally scary presence, while this kid just looks like he's coming over to my house with a fucking plate of cookies. I mean, honestly, that is a good excuse to be. I mean, if you're gonna show the past, you might as well hire an actor who is still a fucking kid, since everybody remains a kid. Very fucking temporarily. Though I will admit though that I hate this scene too. But for different reasons than you do. The reason I personally hate this scene is because it was completely fucking pointless to show Michael Myers as a kid. I mean, we already had a whole fucking movie showing just that. So we don't need yet another scene showing it in a sequel. Though I will give you credit for one thing. Michael Myers really does look scary as fuck in the first Halloween movie. But honestly, that doesn't excuse the fact that Michael Myers was given an unnecessary backstory and he had abusive parents. A serial killer having no abusive background is actually a lot scarier than a serial killer who did have abusive parents. Oh and by the way, that horseshit is the main reason why I hate the 2007 Halloween movie so fucking much. Did you get a look at the naked chick? Man, she was F-I-N-E-5. She still look good to me. Nice old titties are hanging out. Come on, that's disgusting. Stop it now. I got wood just ziplocking her up. Stop it. Shut up. What's the difference between jam and jelly? I don't know. What? You can't jelly your cock up the dead girl's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny! These funny guys are talking about raping Linda's corpse. Is that supposed to be funny? I... I... I really cannot comprehend this at all. Raping dead women is not funny! It's not fucking funny! I personally don't mind dark jokes. But if they aren't funny at all and are just awful, that really is a problem. You know what makes this even worse? It's the fact that everybody in the movie talks like a fucking retard. That is a massive problem that I hear with the movie. Which leads me to believe that Rob Zombie lives in a fucking bubble and never had any real life conversation. That might explain why nobody talks normally in this movie since he has no real life conversations to reference. Now that's funny! I don't blame you for laughing at that. Those two had it coming for being so fucking stupid. You're exaggerating to a massive degree. The scene where he says fuck over and over again does not go for that long. In fact, it goes on for a very fucking short time. Though, I will agree with you on one thing. The fact that fuck is said so much really does show poor writing. Then again, so does the rest of the fucking dialogue. So it's not like it's especially notable. Wait, what the fuck? There isn't a bullet hole in his mask. There isn't even blood on his mask. Online sketch comedies have more consistency than this crap. As much as I hate to admit it, you're right. The old Smosh skit videos, and I am saying old because I haven't watched Smosh at all lately, 
Really two big more shells than this movie. But they are still fucking awful though. Okay, you see, there's a slasher killing, and then there's just fucking overkill. As a matter of fact, let's count and see how many times she's been stabbed by Michael Myers. Times? Yeah, I think she was dead on the fourth one, dude. Wow, not only did you talk about how fucking unnecessary the stepping is, you also proved it by counting the amount of stepping. Well done, man. Also, I completely agree. This was completely fucking unnecessary since Lori was right fucking there. The sad thing is, people who defend this movie have the balls to back up this killing, stating that it's more realistic. Bull fucking shit. One or two times in the chest will do the trick in real fucking life. This is just overkill and fucking pointless. I mean, technically, those people are right. It absolutely is realistic. I can easily imagine something like this happening in real life. But I do agree, though, that this is a terrible defense since it touches the issue. The issue isn't whether or not it's realistic, but instead about whether or not the stabbings are fucking pointless, which they are. What? Uh, w wait, 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 w was that entire opening in her nightmare? The, the white horse, the coroner's death, the hospital chase? All of it? No, that doesn't make any fucking sense. The coroner's scene was meant to show us how Michael escaped. How the hell would Lori know the vivid details of that? Not only that, why the fuck would Lori imagine the mother she has never fucking laid eyes on standing with a white horse no less? Or imagine the coroners talking about Eno raping her dead best friend. Yeah, like I said, none of this makes any fucking sense. I mean, there clearly is a text that says a few years later. Meaning that I've had you said before was probably not a dream, but instead showing past events. Though I don't blame you for coming to the conclusion since this is a terrible transition. There is of course also the possibility that this might have been her fucking dream. The movie never makes that clear. Which really shows that this is poorly done on the movie's part. But even if she didn't dream that, the point that it makes no sense that she would see someone she never experienced would still apply to what you say later on in the movie. So yeah, this is dumb either way. If you want us to make a Captain Planet joke, press 1. If you want us to make a Superman joke, press 2. If you want us to make a big, really fucked up joke about Margot Kidder's psychotic episode from the 90s and point out the tragic irony that she is now playing a therapist, please press 3. To see the Web of Cinema team doing the Apache, press 4. Cast your votes now. Well, it's a good thing then that I voted for number 5, none of the above, but instead try something different. Oh, and I must admit that dancing scene is funny as hell. Far more entertaining than anything in the actual fucking movie. Though I have a critique towards that. It goes on for a bit too long in my opinion. Dr. Loomis is a media whore? What? That is not Dr. Loomis. That is not acknowledging Dr. Loomis. As a matter of fact, you could just fucking just... 
but it, Dr. Phil, because it's the same thing. You know, God forbid he could talk about how he wanted to take down Michael because it was the right thing to do, like the original Loomis. No, fuck that. We don't have interesting characters in this movie. Just make Loomis a completely unlikable fuck. I absolutely fucking love how Spidey makes a point against Dr. Loomis and Phil Master Adam follows it up with his own point. That is so fucking awesome because it shows that the cooperation here is perfect. Oh, and I also have something to add to this point. It fucking pisses me off, even to this day, how much this movie totally fucking butchered Dr. Loomis. He isn't just a great character in the 1978 Halloween movie. He's a great character in the original Francis as a whole. In fact, he is hands down the best aspect of those movies. So having him so fucking butchered in this movie is beyond unforgivable. towards her death. Even though she is a minor character, she still is a pretty fucking awesome character in the original series. The cops find the barn... somehow. I mean, they are fucking police officers. They usually have good resources to find the criminals that they are looking for. This shouldn't be that surprising. Again with a fucking white horse? Dude, I'm just telling you, listen, anger management wouldn't kill you. Shut up, Adam. You know what, Danielle? You kill Danielle Harris, you fucking sons of bitches! I'll kill you! I'll kill all of you! All of you will fucking die! Did you just play it your eyes? But then I saw the critic said in his Batman and drop in review. Not cool, man. Not cool at all. Then, after we get Michael Myers doing the one thing we never wanted him to do, talk! For God in hell, die! Oh! Honestly, I don't think the fact that he talked is such an issue. If it was executed well, it could have been good. I mean, it wasn't, obviously, but it could have been. It depends on the execution. You know what? I generally don't have a problem with people liking bad movies. I'm in love with a movie about a killer hand puppet fucking turkey known as Thanksgiving, okay? And I like the Resident Evil movies. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Yeah, don't hate, but this, this. You had no excuse. This is supporting terrorism. This is supporting evil. You literally set the world backwards. You literally set women's rights back. You literally set horror back. Television back. Movies back. A time machine will go all the way back until we were amphibious goo in the fucking ground. Calm the fuck down, man. It's just a bad movie. Also, what's the real difference between liking Halloween 2? And the Resident Evil movies. There really fucking isn't. Although I will agree that Halloween 2 is a worse movie, your arguments can easily apply as much to those movies as this applies to Halloween 2. AKA not valid at all. It's just a bad movie, nothing more. I guess I don't like it. Guess not. Okay, two important questions. Who the hell are those two? And why should I care? I mean seriously, they just appeared in a video out of fucking nowhere with no reason or logic behind it. Now, I've watched a lot of your videos, Film Master Adam. And we said that they have no clue who the hell those people are. Now, I don't mind cameos, but they have to at least be funny or make sense. And neither is the case here. This camera just came out of fucking nowhere. And like I said, I have no reason to care who these guys are. You know, I used to feel sorry for Vietnam War vets, but after seeing this movie, I could say suck it up because I've been through worse. 
Seeing this vile creation of life must be some kind of military experiment in mental anguish to see who would make the best and coldest of serial killers. This movie should be hunted on an episode of Supernatural, and any maniac who somehow enjoyed this shit needs a fucking exorcist. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is going way too far. I don't care if you're exaggerating for the purpose of playing a character. This is going too far even for that. How dare you say that a movie is a worse experience than actual harm that some people have to deal with in real life. It's not even remotely comparable. This is just a bad movie, nothing more. Get the hell over yourself, man. This is so bad that it makes me want to thank Michael Bay for putting out quality crap. That's right, Michael Bay's films have more substance and more sense than this utter shit. As much as I hate to admit it, you're right. Despite how shitty most of the Transformers movies are, this movie is far worse than any of them. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. This is, in my opinion, Phil Master Adam's best video. I know it's a bold statement, but I'm sticking to it. He does a great job tearing this awful movie apart. As for my opinion on his co-partner, Spidey, well, I have never watched any of his videos outside Phil Master Adam's channel. So I have no fucking idea how his reviews are like when he is just with himself. But he did a solid job in this specific review. Though I do have an issue with how he acts like a total elitist in this video. But aside from that though, he did a solid job. You know, Phil Master Adam has reviewed all of the movies in the Halloween franchise. I could easily spend the next decade making video thoughts episodes on all of these reviews once a year every Halloween. And you know what? That's exactly what I'll do. During Halloween of next year, I will be going over his review of the other movie titled Halloween 2. So look out for that. That's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching and have a great day.